this is David. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the sentiment analysis feature of the Azure Language Service. Now, the Azure Language Service is a part of Azure AI services, formerly Cognitive Services, but sometimes you don't need all those services. Maybe you just want a small subset of them. And Azure doesn't allow you to just create the language service on its own without creating an entire set of Azure AI services. To do that, I navigate to the Azure portal. I click this big plus create a resource, and then I'll search for language service. This is the one that I want. Language service, I'll select create language services. You notice I have a, a set of standard features that are available here, including sentiment analysis that we'll cover today. I have a couple other things that I can add here, custom question answering, custom text classification, etc. I'm not going to select those and add those. Those will add other resources like a storage account and a, uh, an Azure AI search feature. I don't need that for what I'm doing now because I'm just going to do the built-in thing. So I'll click on continue to your resource and I have to tell it what resource group it's in. I'm going to put this into the GCAST RG, a resource group that I've already created. I'll place it in the region of East US. I'll give it a name. I'll call it GCAST language SVC and the pricing tier. I've got a free tier and an S tier. I've got two options here. I'm going to take the S one here. It just allows me more calls, higher capacity. And then I have to check this box to say that I agree with all the terms of services for using this feature. Um, and there are some other tabs up here which I can click on or I can go next to navigate between them. I'm not going to change anything in here. They're all optional. The defaults are just fine, but I want to show you that you can restrict what networks have access to this service. You can assign an identity under which this service runs, and you can apply tags, which are name value pairs, so that if you want to do some sorting or filtering when you run reports later on, you can do that. But this tab right here shows that everything is, I filled it out properly. There's nothing missing or inconsistent. And so therefore the create button is enabled right here. If there had been a problem, it would be highlighted here and I could go back and fix that problem and then come back to that tab and create this service. That service takes about a minute to create. So I'm going to pause the video now and I'll come back when it is created. We are back about a minute later, and you can see that if I can go to this, click, click this go to resource button right here, it actually goes to the resource group. And what I want is this language service right there. So I'm going to drill into that. And here we've got all sorts of information about it. Really, um, what I'm most concerned about is the endpoint and the keys. In fact, if I click on this, manage keys. It shows me both. It shows me the endpoint right here. It shows me the region it's in and these two keys. And the reason there are two keys is you only need one, but in case one gets compromised, then you can regenerate that. And while it's regenerating that key, you can switch over to the other key. That's the only reason why there are two keys. All right, we want to test this. And the way we test it, this is an API. We can just send, it's a, a REST API. We can send a message to an endpoint. And in that message, in the header of that message, we want to pass in the key. And in the body of that message, we're going to pass in some text. And it'll return back some JSON, and that JSON will tell, will give a score as to the sentiment with how positive is that text, how negative is that text, how neutral is that text. It'll contain three scores with that'll indicate those three values. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 
I'm going to copy this right here. And this here. And I have pasted that into a curl command. And I'm going to execute that curl command using this cloud shell. I could also do it from a command line locally. But right here, this is a bash cloud shell. And if I paste in some text that I have here, then if you're not familiar with curl, it's the curl command is here. And here I'm saying that I want to post to this endpoint. And you can see that I copied gcastlanguages.cognitiveservices.azure.com, which I got right over here. And this other thing, text slash analytics slash v3o slash sentiment. So I want to know which of these language services I want to do. And that's what that tells it here. And then the dash H is passed in the header. So the I am missing something right here. Can I still do that? To test this, I'm going to open a cloud shell right here. This is a bash shell. I could run it locally on my machine, but I'll simpler to demo it right here. And the code that I want to do is this. I'm going to use a tool called curl. Curl is a free tool. It's really easy to install. And the command, if you haven't used curl before, is the word curl dash X. I want to post to this endpoint. Where did I get that endpoint? Well, this part right here, gcastlanguageservice.com, that came right from here. And then afterwards, I'm telling it to use the sentiment endpoint. So text slash analytics slash v3.0 slash sentiment tells it which service within the language service to use. And then in the header, this dash H, there are two things I'm passing in the header. One is the OCP APIM subscription key. That is the key right here for this language service that I've created. I just copied and pasted it in here. The other is the content type. I'm telling it that I'm using application slash JSON. So in the body, I'm going to send it some JSON and the format is documents. And then this, in, this square bracket here indicates that it's an array. And within, there's only one document in this array. It is in English. I just gave it an ID of one. And the text is your product is great. And this is going to return some JSON to us that'll tell us what is the sentiment of that document. And here it is. Uh, I passed it one document, so it's passed it that array of one document, identified it by this ID. And you can see the sentiment here has a positive. It says overall it's positive. This is the JSON that's coming back and gave some confidence score. Positive score of 1.0, neutral score of 0.0, .0 negative score of 0, 0.0, and then information about the sentence itself, and so on right here. And there are no warnings. So if I do the same thing again, pass in the same With a slight change, say that your product, yeah, say your product product is terrible. Then I get a sentiment of negative, and then I get these three scores again. Positive is zero, neutral is zero, negative is one point oh. Um, why don't I just do something that's sort of not too bad? I'll instead say something. In this case, 
this is the same command, but I've changed the text to your product. It's not too bad. It does have some okay features. So that's not going to be 100% positive, 100% negative. It'll somewhere in between. It's generally positive. Sure, not too bad. Has some okay features. But the positive is only 0.92. Neutral is 0.07. Negative is 0.01. So it, it's somewhere in between. It's not like it's wonderful or it stinks, which is sort of 100% positive or 100% negative and so on. So you can write applications that will simply post to this endpoint, to this HTTP endpoint, passing information in the header and documents in the body. In this video, I've shown you how to use the sentiment analysis feature of the Azure Language Service. This is David. Thank you for watching.